The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. My name is Tyson McMurrin. I am the host of today's webinar. Um, and today we're going to have Charles Robinson from Focus Point be our presenter. And he's going to be covering off configuration beats out customization with the Focus Point solution for e-commerce and SAP Business One. Um, we are recording this meeting, so we're going to keep all of the attendees on mute. Um, if you have any questions throughout the um, presentation that Charles is doing today, um, please just type them into the chat. We will have a Q&A session at the end of this, so um, I'll address any of the questions that appear in the chat. Um, I'll see them, and we'll address them at the end. So without further ado, Charles Robinson, Chief Technology Officer with Focused Impressions, is going to cover off our webinar topic today. Welcome, Charles. Thank you very much. It's nice to be speaking with everybody today. So uh, Focus Point um, is the commerce engine of choice for SAP B1 you know, today and going forward. Uh, this powerful offering that we've been developing over several years offers fantastic B2B commerce, also B2C, as well as customer portal type implementations as well. So it's not just a matter of getting your products online, be able to take the orders. It's also around giving transparency and visibility to your customers to be able to pay on outstanding invoices and those type of things. So these are some of the kind of key concepts that we've kind of put into uh, our product. I'm gonna heavily focus on our configuration and how we can have great time to markets in terms of avoiding customization. And what you're gonna see is the main reason why we only integrate with SAP B1 so that we can get at all those kind of custom areas that you've done in your ERPs without kind of exploding on an e-commerce budget. So with these ideas in mind, we've developed basically a no-code, low-code approach. Now, with that said, nothing is ever, uh, there's no walls, of course, so if there's any type of situation where you actually had to do some type of customization, it is possible, but 99% of the time, we're looking to avoid that, and the platform really allows for that, as I'm going to uh, show you today. We focus on the business processes. So everybody can do e-commerce, but not everybody can do business processes really well, especially streamline them and make them more efficient, both in the ordering process and in the integration. So focus point at a, at a quick snapshot level. Um, I'm gonna just move over and actually show you. We're gonna, I'm gonna keep referring back to the, to the presentation, but I wanna kind of show you what a canvas actually looks like. So this is kind of a live test site. Okay, so what we try to do in these B2B situations is present multiple ways that the site can be configured to take orders. All right, so first and foremost, you're always gonna have your site search, and we use very advanced learning algorithms to basically increase the conversion even on B2B customers. There's different flavors of B2B customers. Some of them know what they're wanting. They come repeatedly to your site. They place the same type of orders, perhaps recurring, but there's also chances for new products and new information that you wanna convey. So we have that search available and it gets better over time. The web navigation, of course, is here. So if you wanna have a basically drill down to certain type of product lines and these kind of things, you're able to do that. The idea is to get that buyer to the product in the least amount of clicks possible. It's true for B2C and it's just as true for B2B. So this is a catalog approach way to ordering. Now, before I get too much farther into this and we get into configurations, I do wanna point out that everything that I'm showing you is configured with an SAP. I am gonna be showing you what these panels look like in SAP. So to have a great commerce experience and customer portal experience with Focus Point, you don't even need to have really any web knowledge. All the work, the item master, from pricing, descriptions, uh, even pictures, it's all sourced in SAP. So with that said, this is what a, a typical product can look like. So we have the ability to do parent-child relationships, 
So we can order multiple SKUs at the same time. So here, this is an example uh, of a beer hop. Uh, I'm able to order packages and pounds at the same time and display both type of pricing. So part of this tight integration is around the things like units of measure and conversions. It's very common where you need to sell, say, by the package, but when we write the sales order, it needs to be written in pounds. This could be the case for uh, cases um, you know, versus bottles or something like that. So kind of full support around that. So this is the catalog based type ordering. It's very popular um, in that kind of B2C space, but it's certainly not the only way to order. These specifications that I'm gonna show you in SAP shortly, as you align your master data, we do a lot of fancy automatic configuration of these. So if you wanna do price ranges, or this could be uh, say machinery type products, you can apply filters automatically, right? So all you have to do is set these in SAP and this whole filtering process will uh, just take an effect automatically. This is really effective for large catalogs. Okay, I'm just gonna close that out. So moving now on to another way to actually place an order is the order pad or the order catalog. So basically when it comes to presenting options for B2B, I'm just gonna scroll down here. It's oftentimes where you wanna present an actual predefined list of products. And again, they may be uh, in different units of measure. This particular business partner I'm logged into doesn't have any pricing uh, for this particular product. This is a test user. So that's an important note because the visibility of the products and the pricing all follow the SAP rules. There's some interesting things here aside from just being able to place orders. And of course, at the top of the screen, we have that search, but I can have you know, multiple units of measure and multiples. So if I need to have something that can only be bought in multiples of 50, uh, this is easy to do. I have full control over stock. So focus point obviously is directly integrated to SAP B1. It has full access of inventory into all the different warehousing. It has access to the purchase orders. So we know about lead times and those type of things. So it gives you strong flexibility to uh, look ahead if you want to make this information available. Of course, nothing is ever uh, forced. You don't actually have to show anything about your inventory if you don't want to. I'm just gonna skip over here. I could order off that order pad or I can come here uh, and order right off, uh, right off an actual product details screen itself. Before we jump heavy into configuration, just wanna just show the customer portal there very quickly. This is a very important aspect of any kind of implementation. It's not always about taking orders, it's about transparency and being able to order off previous orders and these type of things. These are live lookup of SAP. So it's not about web orders, it's about SAP orders with focus point. So I can order, uh, I can see my previous quantity that ordered, order 100, order one. I can have full access to my outstanding invoices. So for those accounts payables and those kind of things, full communication workflows are available. So when invoices are due, notifications can be sent out. Um, and they can come right onto their portal and make those payments. So I can see what's in my invoice lines, have that pay now option. And that pay now option is linked to any number of supported gateways. We support an awful lot of them. Uh, there's not many that we haven't heard of that don't support. So authorize.net, uh, PayPal, Stripe, Square, Moneris, Bambora. I mean, the, there's, there's just a massive list of uh, ones that are supported. So all that being said now, let's get more into, um, more into some deep configuration. So I mentioned that, you know, focus point is all about time to market without any sacrifice. So let's imagine a situation here where we wanted to get very clever with our inventory rules. So we're in a multi warehouse situation perhaps, and I need to be able to handle uh, things differently per product. So I'm going to move now into the back end of Focus Point. 
The back end of focus point is all controlled through access control list, whether you have access or not. What you have access to is all controlled by security. So inside our offering here, there's a little thing called workflows. And this workflow engine is very powerful. It's one of the ways that we enable configurations without coding. So we click on add new workflow here. I can do new process too, just to show you how quick this is. So if I want to set up a very complex workflow, I can do this within minutes. So in this case, I want to, uh, any time that my stock dips below a certain amount quantity, I want to unpublish it from the website, right? So what I would do is come in here, create a general workflow. I'll call this uh, unpublish uh, products, all right? So I'm just gonna create this rule. And then I have all these actions. So these actions are kind of uh, preloaded formulas that we have. Focus point can handle any type of dynamic formula, but we do prepackage some just to make it easy. So things like send an email or send an alert, launch a form. So we have you know, a full e-form capability, change a product status and order status. Uh, and again, a lot of these things can be either user driven or they can be driven out of SAP. So if I wanna do something say around inventory here, I'm gonna select my inventory template. I'll go ahead and click save and continue. So as soon as I save this, I get access to all the information that's behind here. So I have this kind of canvas data around inventory. So I wanna take this, look at it like a template. And when SAP sends me uh, an item update or an item card, I'm gonna apply one of these like this unpublished rule to uh, one or all of them. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna track inventory and I can have multiple warehouses here if I wanna do that. I'm gonna just uncheck that because really what it's all about unpublishing. So my minimum stock quantity, I'm gonna say, look, I need to have at least uh, uh, four or five here, let's say with five. And when that five threshold gets hit, I want to unpublish the product, okay? And then if I wanna have my notification that to say the, the store admin that I'm now below seven, I can go ahead and set that. And I can decide about back ordering. So simple things like back ordering, uh, if you're gonna force a back in stock subscription, uh, if you're gonna just take the order and work with the lead times. The idea here is that, you know, this becomes a rules engine to allow these business processes to happen so that you don't have to be you know, thinking about this from a static perspective, like it can only do it one way. So just simple manipulation here can drive that. My product availability range, if there was minimum thresholds that, uh, you know, that were important in the cart, I could set these. So you know, I, I just can't sell any more than a thousand type rule. Or if I wanted to uh, specify a specific number of quantities that I will allow, something like that uh, could be done. And that's basically it. So this rule is now saved. So what can happen now is we move into the eForms side of the house. Now I'm gonna show you an example of an eForm just so you can get a feel for what they're used for. An eForm is you know, ideal obviously for data collection. You can, you can make them a contact form, a registration form. It can be a product configurator where you drill down through a series of, uh, of items basically to kind of get at uh, an actual product that you're after. And we're gonna take a look at a lot of these types of examples today. So let's look at uh, a contact submission form. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on manage. This is a test one that already exists. So here I can see that the contact submission is the name. I have these CMS pages. So if I fill out a form and I hit submit, I wanna be presented with some type of nice branded message. So we have all these uh, CMS pages that are available and you can customize uh, simple HTML or choose one of our predefined templates. So uh, if you have those kind of pixel perfect, you know, you have your, your logo just so and it's all, all nice and tight there, you can go ahead and use that. And I'll show an example of that. If there's any type of just static emails that you know always goes to a, like accounts payable or something, you can go ahead and do that. I'll skip some of this more granular stuff, but if this was like a type of registration form, 
then it would basically signal SAP that there's a new user that is requesting um, you know, access to the system and that kind of thing. The, the main thing too, of course, the users of the system are contacts, web-enabled contacts of your business partners, right? So you have several types. So in SAP, I can have any business partner. I can toggle them to be allowed to log on to the web. Just does the business partner exist on the web as a customer? And then if that business partner has one or more contacts, I can individually web enable them. So I can just enable some, maybe I just want to enable accounting so we can come look at the customer portal. Uh, or I want to enable uh, just a, a, a couple of kind of key contacts uh, and then allow them to say who their employees are and who should have access because I can't track from SAP all the employees of my customer and who should have access. So I want to delegate that to my actual customers, you know, my business partners. So the steps component is actually how you build the steps. So this is a very simple uh, process here. I'm just going to unpublish this momentarily. So we have different controls. These ones are mostly text boxes, but if I just wanted to show you really quick how this can look. So I could say, um, you know, this is my uh, question perhaps, and I have these libraries. So if I want to just, maybe I want to collect like information about uh, uh, addresses. So I have country and state and, or if I want to dip in and say, show me all the sales reps from SAP. So I have some of these libraries that are automatically available. And then drop down lists, radio box, check boxes, uh, all down the line here in terms of the types of ways I can display the information. And full dependencies, of course, uh, are supported as well. So once I have this published, we're getting to the most important part is, all right, well, now what do I do with it? So in this case here, this, let's go, I'm gonna open a new tab here and put some laser focus on this particular workflow. So email to business partner contact. This is one of the workflows that I set up ahead of time. All we wanna do is email the business partner contact. We're just gonna send an email. All right, so this is the action that we're gonna take. So if I come back in here, um, all my workflows are right here. So I can inject any workflow into this form that I want. And then I can set a trigger. Like when do I want this uh, workflow to actually happen? Right, so on form submission, for example, is one such way, it's nice and easy, you just hit the edit button, and uh, if whatever the options are available uh, would be here. So in this case here, if I was on a product instead of an e-form, and I wanted to apply um, some type of inventory rule or something like that, this is the same way that I would do that. And then I would go and individually manage, uh, we talked about the message templates, so who's gonna get these kind of templates? All right, so this is what this screen is all about. I'm gonna just jump into my content management here and show you these message templates. So these message templates are communication mechanisms that work like mail merges. They kind of insert, uh, they insert information. So if I want to have one on say order place, like every time an order is placed, just to give you an idea here, uh, I can have some very nice, uh, very nice banners, graphics, and basically merge all this type of uh, information in. So the workflow engine, we have some fantastic documentation on it. The learning curve is very, very light, but the possibilities are, are, are ultimately endless. So let's go a little closer now to, to SAP here. I'm going to open up a product level configuration. And just gonna scroll down here. I have all these rules basically. So when we talk about avoiding customization, um, there has to be some type of setting or workflow that is, is readily available. So we give basically pre-configuration steps for all the different areas of the commerce experience. So one of the most important of course is the product experience. So within the product, I can directly uh, in this case here, if I want to pull live pricing. So pricing can work multiple ways. If I want to get a very complex price that involves uh, multiple types of discounts and those kind of things, I have a way through uh, our endpoint to be able to fetch that. 
But that aside, we always have access to all the pricing uh, that SAP offers. This is just as any additional logic. We also support complex scenarios of buy one, get one free. Um, buy so much of this product, get so much in this other category, uh, at X off, all these type of things that are very, very difficult to do otherwise. So in the configuration space here, I have all these type of settings that I can apply to my product template. So s and often has in information around uh, width and length and height. This is important information for shipping, but not necessarily something that you necessarily should show the end user. So then we get into, should we support price breaks? So SAP sending period and volume discounts, maybe we don't wanna show them uh, on, this, on the product details page. Uh, do we wanna hide any zero dollar price items? Sometimes that's the case where just something's not priced yet in SAP, but it's available. May wanna just put it as a, as a pre-order or, so, or something like that. You have very, very granular controls over the unit of measures. And as I get down here, there is these text boxes. And this is where things get really, really powerful. I'm just gonna to switch to SAP just briefly so I can show you um, how, some of this, how some of these dots connect here. Okay, so here's a typical item card in SAP. And I have this FP item config. So the actual item master data, we pull a lot of information off here, priceless, um, you know, the descriptions, those kind of things. But in order to properly stage this for the web, we do need to add a few things, um, which we do here. So first of all, is this product even gonna be available on the web? Not everybody puts every item in the catalog on the web. So I do have the option just to not have this sync to the web. If this particular product had a web parent, Perhaps this was a specific SKU, a color size variation of a parent, then I could pick the parent product. The nice thing about the parent child association in focus point is those style SKUs or high level SKUs don't actually have to exist. All right, so I can uh, just worry about the actual individual items. Just to show you an example of that, let me just flip back here. Um, and we'll go over to one of these examples here. This is an apparel company. I, I find that apparel companies tend to have the most type of complexity with the different size and fits and colors. Uh, machinery can be, be complicated as well, but apparel just has that extra level of uh, permutations. This particular customer has around 750,000 different possible SKU combinations here. So we have this kind of master style SKU, this 1310. Um, but this is, so this would be considered the parent in the example I was just showing. And this SKU is a real item in SAP. And I can present this in multiple ways. We're going to take a look at this here in a moment. And I can see my SKU is changing. So now it's dash 44, uh, dash 46. So it's listening basically for the user selections here. Um, you know, full support for uh, sales bill of materials as well. Here's a great example of those e-forms. Um, this is a way to actually tie an e-form right into uh, a product. So if I did want to actually sell this garment and I did want to get some sizing information, and perhaps puts a name bar, uh, perhaps like who the employee is or something like that, put my own name here, and hit yes here. Um, this is an e-form that we've looked at previously. Again, so we can inject these e-forms anywhere. And this is all self-serve as well. You don't need, uh, you, don't, you really don't need us or your VAR you know, with the training that we have, um, all the documentation and videos, tutorials you'll be able to set all this up on yourself. Anything that's positioned in here, I can uh, add as a UDF going into the sales order into SAP. So this, in this case, it's very important to know my height, my weight, my chest measurements, and I need to collect that information on the sales order. So I don't have to actually have to customize anything. This will just follow on those UDFs. So coming back now into uh, SAP, so this is our shopping cart profile, as we call it. 
So we have some additional options here, uh, track inventory, then we have alternate SKU. Alternate SKU is an important one. This is a little different than what I was showing you earlier, um, where I might have to have multiples of 50 or something like that. Um, this is a nice way where you can actually take quantities from one unit of measure and convert it to another uh, very quickly here. So if I take a look at an example, this is another way to present an order. So this is another B2B portal. Um, this is uh, basically all the specifications here, full HTML5 support and those item panels that we're about to go over. Uh, attachments, of course, PDF attachments. And then this is all the children. So the parent is this product and the children are here. So instead of seeing this in a drop down, like I showed on the Mill 95 where I selected the 2019 date, I can present these in a grid list. So here's the extra small, the 2XL, the medium and the extra large. This is a very common experience in B2B. And the alternate unit of measure here is case. So 100 per box and 10 boxes per case. So if I start, let me just make sure my cart's clean here before I do this, it is. So if I start adding some information here, if I do um, uh, two cases, it's gonna give me an immediate price that's gonna be uh, matched up in SAP. So I can buy two cases, which is the um, equivalent of that many boxes. I'm gonna add two more boxes. So two cases plus two boxes. So it should be, uh, oh, let me just go down, hit the add the cart. There we go. So there I use my alternate unit of measure and now I have quantity 22. So that was two cases, two boxes. So two times 10 gives me my 20 plus the two. So just simple things like this. So imagine if you're mm, like a flooring company or you're selling stuff by the pallet and these kind of things, it's very easy to uh, present kind of uh, fractions effectively, right? So I want to buy one case of this and then uh, a few of the other other uh, over overages. And these overages, of course, can be controlled by multipliers as well. So you can say you can buy a case, but you still have to buy at least say four boxes or something like that. So moving back here into uh, my SAP environment, the first thing I'm just going to take a quick run through here is my categories. So my category structure all formatted searches. So this, these are the web categories. So when we started this, I showed the, uh, the mill 95 example. Let's just take a quick refresher there. And come back to the public store. So this, this menu here. So this menu here, again, all synced out of SAP. And this is where you do the assignment. So I could say, uh, you know, whatever this kind of category is, choose that one. So related items, this is really important for upselling, um, you know, different, uh, different products. There's two ways this works. I can statically set this uh, in SAP, or I can have the AI algorithm make those recommendations for me. All right, so if I wanna take a look at a live example of that, let me just go ahead and open up this action ministry. And Uh, let's see, probably two rubber. Let's see if we can find one here. Uh, bottom seals. This is a nice B2B experience here. Notice here it says register today to see pricing. This is a B2B portal that's live, full YouTube integration, and uh, they're showing all the products, but no pricing, right? So I can just see the availability. But unless I log in, I can't actually see any pricing. So here's the related products that I wanted to show you, right? So anybody who's bought uh, the bottom T rubber may wanna buy bottom T vinyl and, and these kind of things. So if you don't wanna spend the time to kind of stage this, this data, then the AI algorithm can take care of it for you. And then we have these product attributes. So these are, this is where we get into, let me go ahead and add a line. This is where we get into, I wanna have selections. So an option, and I wanna add an option here as a dropdown or a grid line with quantity. Let me paint the picture here. So let me just go back into my example here. So 
this configuration I'm showing you right now is this. This actual dropdown of 2019 is a product attribute. Okay. And that's what, uh, that's what this whole thing is about here. So I could choose a uh, grid line with quantity. Uh, the, this example here, these image squares, all right? So sometimes I want to show this as a graphical approach. That's the image squares, 45, right? So I have all these different options to take drop-down lists was the example that I just showed um, right on uh, the Action Industries. Up here, these are drop-down lists. All right, so you have full control over that UI experience. Now, of course, there's an HTML, CSS layer that we have uh, out there for focus point. So if you do want to kind of change the lipstick of it, you have full access to do that type of thing. The item specifications, this is around facts about the product, right? And again, these are all coming from formatted search uh, fields. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, free text type things, um, is everything, you know, matched up. These are all coming from fixed libraries. So if I go back to uh, this example here, um, and I'm looking at these specifications, that's these, right? These are hard facts about the product. It's got an alpha range of eight to 11, or it has a length, a width, it has these very fixed things about it. Now, some of these are already in the item card. What you're really trying to get at is things that you want to filter on. So that's where we come back to this panel. So coming full circle here, as I was just showing that product details page panel, specifications show on product page. And I have purpose, alpha range, beta range, and these are all the things that I'm actually looking at right here. So, okay, so I, I wanna show, the, the, the problem statement is I wanna show um, these specifications on the product page like this, but not necessarily I want them filterable at the category level, all right? Normally that would take an uh, you know, enormous amount of customization to do. So simply by placing these names, specification show on product page, and then specification filter on category page, suddenly um, it's very easy, right? I just put this here, that's it. When the integration runs, it aligns this on the, on the product item cards. So here are my specifications here, but if I go back and I look at the category where this Amarillo product exists, I just have the alpha, the aroma on the left, and the purpose and the crop year packing size. And then I get into my categories. So I basically, even though I have more specifications that could filter on, I have restricted it through configuration that it's just gonna be these ones. There's probably a million different scenarios, right? The, the goal here on this, on this webinar today is for me to just take some of these examples and then you know, through the art of extrapolation, imagine how you could apply these to any number of different use cases that you might have. Um, so, you know, these kind of things also can work against shipping rules and those kind of things. I, I've never honestly, I've done probably over 200 e-commerce implementations. There's never been two the same. There's always, um, there's always subtle differences, whether it be in the checkout process, the payment process, someone wants to do, an authorizing capture, someone needs to uh, defer it, do freight calculations or rate, uh, rate shopping first. There's always some uniqueness, right? So focus point is built to handle those kind of uniquenesses. So here, you know, we're getting now into the units of measure, but I'll just go back to SAP just because I want to spend a bit more time here. Got cross, uh, cross cells. This again, this happens at the checkout. Imagine if your same experience, it's not a related item. It's just things that we believe that you'd be interested in, right? So you're not on that product page anymore. You're, you're coming out of the actual checkout. Um, what might you, what might you wanna do? Um, and you have all this information available so I can upsell these items. More and more though, people are relying on their AI algorithms and uh, we have machine learning uh, that we have hooked up. We are hosted in Microsoft Azure. So Focus Point is a software as a service offering. So it's kind of one price, that's it. And inside that offering, though we are taking advantage of different services from Microsoft, like their machine learning, and we are applying that information 
uh, right into the data sets within focus point. So to better upsell cross sells, again, it comes down to, yes, e-commerce is straightforward to do once you take all this kind of uh, these considerations, but how can you make it better? How can you improve? Uh, user roles, super important. So I mentioned uh, that basically everything is controlled through a security role. So if I want to control visibility of a product, this V001, if I want to restrict who has access to that, then I just have to set these customer roles. These customer roles appear in focus point and you can set any rule you want against them, literally anything. So I could have this product is, is visible or this product uh, is gonna have this kind of manipulation done on it. Um, literally any rule, I mean, it's tax exempt. This product is tax exempt. The business partner may not be, but this, you know, this product is type thing. Um, you can get as granular as you want to get. Optionally, we do have images and attachments. You know, by default, uh, SAP usually only takes kind of one image off the remarks field off the item master. So we do offer um, a way to get as many images as you want. This and the attachments are both optional though. I wanna make that clear that you don't have to have your library stored uh, in SAP. We can grab it from any external source the goal of e-commerce, of course, is to be very fast, very efficient. So we need to have those images kind of resized automatically and cached. So the nice thing is you don't have to think about, you know, do I, are these images the right size? You know, focus points is gonna crop and compress as needed. It's gonna deliver everything in the best real estate possible. So we always start developing on mobile first, and then we work down to the tablet, then the desktop, then the 4K. So even though we primarily focus on the B2B community, more and more the B2B community is adopting smaller devices to, to place those orders. And we wanna be ahead of that curve already. Okay, so with all this item card in place, that's great, but how do we get the configurations, the uniqueness of, um, of the solution uh, up to the web? So we have some of these uh, user-defined windows here. Um, these are some of our formatted uh, fields, but I'm gonna just focus on this FP additional field uh, one for right now. So if I want to get any, any piece of information out of SAP, and it can be uh, a direct query, uh, whatever have you, or if I want to send this in reverse, this is how I do it. So this is one of, the, one of our secret sauces here. So right here, I hit this dropdown, integration direction. Each line is a data element. So I can go from focus point, which is what FP stands for, to SAP, or I can do these in reverse, all right? Or I can tag it with the query. We'll take a look at a couple here. So this particular one is gonna affect order lines. It's of type string. And the field ID is amps. And this is a user-defined field called uamps. Now, the best way to kind of get these map to fields is just to look at uh, your API, like if you were to load this through a DTW. And by the way, it's expected, although I took you through the FBI and config, is expected that you would load that, you know, in bulk through a DTW or something like that. Um, you can place any user-defined field you want, and then you also have the option to do a lookup query. This lookup query can be a SQL store procedure or a direct um, select statement, anything like that. So this tends to get built out. So any, any UDF, uh, you know, any manipulation that you're doing, it's gonna come on here. Um, if I'm going, uh, you know, SAP to FP, I would just flip it like this and I would send it out. In reverse, we have the same mapping table though that talks back. So if I come back in here into focus point, I have the matching table. All right, so in here, I can exchange sales rep information. All right, so very simple like that. Or I can show you something a little more complicated here. Go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna finish this impersonation session. And I'm gonna show you the additional field mapping. So it's logging me out. It's gonna start a new session here. All right, and then SAP integration, additional field mapping. So here's what kind of a fully built out table can look like. So this is all about configuration, right? I want to assign a territory code. 
um, to uh, my business partner. Uh, perhaps I want to just control the phone number, um, which is something that uh, these folks did. So if I open up the new tab here, something very simple just as a, the contact number. It's filtered based on a piece of data at an SAP, depending on where I'm coming from. If I want to apply a free shipping uh, rule, if I want to apply, I want to know that if I'm taking a new address uh, for a sales order, that's not an address already associated to that contact on that business partner, I want to know that. Um, so I can flag it so the guys doing the, the pick packing know that this is not a standard address. But I also have the option to be able to add it just to the logistics tab in SAP or store it permanently in that, in that business record. If I want to have a payment gateway, for example, like authorize.net, and there's some information I want to pull onto the sales order, I just have to look up the name of what authorize.net calls the specific field I want. And with a simple formula, I can go ahead and pass it. So back in here. So this is the pairing table. So once you get this done, and this whole process generally only takes a couple hours, that's the hardest part of the project. So as I've shown you today, it literally can take any any kind of scenario that you want, and if you have full access to, to SQL to pull information out of SAP, once it gets to focus point, you have full access to the workflow engine, the eForm engine, and the templates basically to actually apply any configuration and we have seen uh, a great many and we continue to add new all the time so if we look at uh, particular uh, examples that are taking you know it could be called cumbersome or whatever but it's still configuration we will streamline it as it gets more popular right so simple things like converting over the lines uh, all one-time configuration it's not expected that after you would go live that you would ever have to touch these kind of fields again. You know, typically your, you know, your uh, sales quantity per pack unit, you're never going to rename that field in SAP. So once it's set, it's set forever type thing. Of course, you can always come in if there is a, you know, process improvement or you do make changes, you can uh, hop in here and, uh, and follow suit. A lot of other types of configurations, way too much to do in a one hour session, but just at a glance here, uh, you know, some of our top level configurations, just on simple things and how you might control addresses. It's expected that, you know, contacts are going to exist on more than one business partner. So when you're placing an order, you need to make sure that the right address for the right business partner that they have access to is being added, right? So, um, you know, we have these filtering options. Perhaps you want to disable the billing so that you don't want to actually, you know, you want to pre-approve all billing addresses in those B2B scenarios, but if they don't have one, you might want to allow the first entry to go through. You know, these kind of things are very straightforward to do, um, and there's a checkbox for it. At the end of the day, you know, I, I try, as a group from, from Focus and Freshness here, we try to make everything uh, a checkbox, a drop down, uh, or worst case, a formula. And eventually those formulas roll up into an easy configuration. Right, but we always avoid that that way to actually code it. So our implementations, we've done implementations in just as little as two weeks, but our average implementation uh, when item master data is ready to go can be under eight weeks. All right, so very complex installations can go live in just a matter of two months. And honestly, the it's not the technology that's the holdup, it's the data preparation. So when you think, all right, I'm ready to go live uh, with my store, um, the lion's share of the time is preparing the master data, right? Because applying these rules, once the, the business brainstorms it and they confirm like, oh yeah, this is what we do, this is what we do, to implement it is, I'm either checking a box or, write, or just configuring a formula or a workflow. It's, it's that easy. Like, so, the, the engagement time for us is, is quite low just because of that. It's more around just understanding what the business processes are and what has to be set up because the integration with Focus Point is already done. Any type of, when you're getting ready to e-commerce, it's not about how we're gonna integrate or really what we're gonna integrate. That's not really the question. That's just selecting Focus Point bypasses that step. The e-commerce implementation or the customer portal implementation starts with 
uh, what data points do we want to have our customers interact with, right? And that's where the it starts, and then it moves into what are the what are the purchasing processes uh, that we're going to turn on, right? And that's where the project actually lives. There's no struggle trying to figure out how to get this thing integrated. That part is done within an hour window, uh, you know, immediately. After, it's almost the first step after uh, you onboard with Focus Point is you get a tenant deployed. Um, and the integration is turned on. So very, very straightforward to do. So lots of different settings, too much to show, but I hope I uh, kind of hit on the main points here to kind of show what these capabilities are. I wanted to keep this from being kind of a, a death by PowerPoint here. So just a few things though to, to talk about. We do believe we do have the lowest cost integration and that's just through years of, of hard work, working day in, day out uh, with SAP B1. I want to say as well that once you get on focus points, there is no e-commerce upgrade. All right. So if you go from SAP 9.1, and you can see here that we support 9.1 and up, so 9.2, 9.3, 10.0, 10.0, .0 uh, both SQL and HANA. Even in the future, when there's SAP 11 one day, B1 11, there's no focus point upgrade. We're always testing our platform against the latest releases. And uh, when you do, when you're VAR, uh, you know, third wave upgrades you, you will simply uh, just, we'll just install the, the scripts at the current version that you're moving into. You know, it takes very quick half an hour. It's almost a non-event. Um, you know, you'll spend the bulk of your time just, your bar will look after the SAP upgrade and focus point will just chug along. So there's not, mm, I'm going to SAP 10. What about, what about my e-commerce? Is that going to be affected? Right? So that's kind of, that, those concerns and worries are kind of forever gone. And again, as I showed today, with those mapping tables, any UDO, any UDF can be handled. You know, when it comes to web stores and portals, it's expected that you're going to have, uh, you know, you're going to hit lots of different kind of scenarios. You're going to want to offer different kind of B2B experiences, perhaps for different business partners. Right. So we have multiple web store options that are available. And of course, just simple portals, right? I just want to be able to come on, see my invoices, and uh, again, have those kind of set up, you know, uh, very, very quickly. Just a quick highlight here around just third-party integrations. I mentioned a lot of different payment gateways that we support. Uh, it's the same type of thing in shipping. And we have a full team just around just the e-commerce side of it. So we're always looking for new integrations to CRMs, uh, definitely social media, and those type of things. Uh, Power BI, we're always kind of pushing those third-party integrations uh, to enhance that customer experience. That's, at the end of the day, it's not just about, again, not just about turning those uh, commerce portal on. It's how do we be the best? How can you how can you outmaneuver your competition, right? So that's how we're that's how we're trying to maneuver this type of uh, this type of thing. So very quickly, you know, configuration, you know, it's only here because of the lessons learned and the hard work over several years. And because we have several hundred now customers that we've gone through on, on commerce implementations, and I've been doing this by the way for 20 years, so I date back to legacy year a few days and stuff. I've always been in e-commerce. Um, customizations never go according to plan. I've never seen one in 20 years. I live and breathe IT. I'm a developer, but you know, I went through computer science, you know, uh, you know, I've never seen customization and integration projects go according to plan. It just, it's just, it never happens. So, I mean, just going on a configurable platform like Focus Point, you, you don't know what you don't know. You, you, you avoid a lot of horror stories and upcharges and craziness just simply by, you know, aligning to Focus Point. And it keeps your investment with SAP B1, you know, very, very safe. And the implementations are, are again so fast that uh, you know the budgets are always under control. So um, just to close up before the Q and A here, um, you know, again, we I talked about kind of an eight weeks is kind of a, a scary number. Very very complex apparel uh, type uh, implementations like the actionware that I showed you with uh, 750,000 SKUs. I mean, those can take up to 12 weeks, and it all comes down to how ready. 
how ready you are. Um, you know, ones that have one-to-one -one mapping, no parent-child relationships, they can be turned on, you know, in as little as two weeks, right? There's always a bit of time to prepare the payment gateways and get the shipping rules and stuff. Um, so that's kind of how uh, quick it can happen. Um, the upgrades, again, just no upgrades. Focus point is updated four times a year. You're always going to be on the latest version, so you never have to kind of worry about that. Um, and honestly, let's just get, especially in this kind of uh, COVID era that we're kind of coming out of, but not really. Everyone has, over the last year, really kind of turned to the web to kind of enable their business. But even though, you know, vaccines and stuff are rolling out and, you know, things are possibly going to get back to normal one day soon, the buying behavior has permanently changed. You know, Amazon saw a decade of growth in eight, like what they would normally see over 10 years. They saw that in like eight months last year. There's some staying items that are going to just be here in 2021, 2022, and so on. The people that got used to online ordering that weren't forced to do it before are there now and the adoption is much higher right so that's just stuff to think about so i mean like if, if you've been kind of sitting you know wondering when's the right time to pull the trigger you know again even after all the vaccines everything's rolled out the buying behavior has changed right so you know it, it is going to disrupt the retail and in certain industries and this is one way to kind of stay ahead of it by uh, you know having these kind of external touch points so um, that's my comments. Well, thank you, Charles. That was uh, very informative. And, and it's, it's very evident to see that all of your item master information you, you have in Business One already, if you've been using Business One, all we have to do is do the configuration to say, what are the rules on my website? And I'm not having to replicate out onto um, my e-commerce site, all of those items, and then having uh, this synchronization between everything. Everything just basically is connected already. And then all of the configurations that you were showing, most of those are around the e-commerce behavior of, of how you want the customer experience to be. Um, customer experience is one of the big things that, that we're hearing a lot of. And, and, and I think that's where you said, you know, no e-commerce implementation is exactly the same because everybody has a different vision of what that customer experience is is to be so um, if if you're thinking about what your customer experience is um, and if you didn't quite see um, how focus point could work for you reach out to us or maybe you saw exactly what you wanted reach out to us and what we can do is we can spend some time with you um, understanding what you have in business one already and we being at third wave can help um, navigate some of that preliminary discussion before um, you know getting in touch with focus point and connecting connecting everything together and, and really kind of showing you how this can work in your organization for your customers um, but I mean rapid rapid implementation um, you know, stable environment that you don't have to worry about upgrades and all of those types of things. And, you know, truly an affordable platform. This is why we partnered with Focus Point for, for you know, B2B, B2C, and D2C type transactions. And especially around environments where you have those um, custom configuration or user defined fields where you're capturing information like the uh, the size or the name on something. So so Charles, great job highlighting all of that today. And, and as he said a couple times, it's a lot of information to, to kind of um, understand within an hour, but it is important to understand that we 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 know business one at third wave, you know e-commerce and um, the customer knows their their um, their customers and they know their environment and um, you know together we can really kind of um, work together to provide you with that stable platform that really allows you to leverage yourself for growth over the long term so um, if there's any questions please type them in the chat i do have a couple for you here charles but um, again thank you for your time Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Tyson. So the first question here, let me just read it here. Um, 
how are the configurations done over time? So, you know, if, if let's say I added a division or something like that, is that something that we at third wave or the customer can handle, um, you know, it, kind of expanding out or, or do we always have to go back to you for, for additional help? No, there's something that you, you guys at third wave could, could definitely handle. Um, if it's any kind of heavy configuration on SAP you need to do on the customer's behalf. Uh, if it's kind of just a new process that's being turned on, then you know the the customer could probably just handle it themselves. Um, so the idea is that this is really self serve. If the data is available in SAP and you're comfortable with those mapping tables I showed, then you the, the customer can do it themselves. But they always have the VAR yourself, like third wave, to lean on if they should need any help. Excellent. Okay. Um... I think that's it for questions. I'm just, there's just one question that I'm answering. It was, uh, when can we expect the recording in our email? Um, so it takes about a half an hour for GoToWebinar to convert this file. Um, after that, I will take the file and um, convert it into a shareable um, link and we'll, we'll, we'll get Mike to send you an email. Um, Mike Hamm will send you an email with the, with the link to the recording. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Um, any other questions? Anybody? Okay, well, that looks like it. Uh, you, you're off the hook, Charles. There wasn't many uh, technical questions there. But again, if, if, if anybody on, on the webinar or if anybody's listening to this recording afterward and you don't know where to start, reach out to us here at Third Wave. Um, we can help you navigate this. We can get you um, connected in as once as we understand what some of the things are that you want to accomplish. Um, we can we can plug you into um, you know an, an engaged discussion with with the Focus Impressions team uh, around how Focus Point can help your organization. Um, so Charles, thank you so much for your time today. Um, everybody that attended this and everybody that's listening to this, thank you for your time. And uh, we'll uh, close today's webinar at this point. Really appreciate it, Tyson. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.